May God be with you. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. I'm looking at this little tiny camera in front of me and uh, say greetings and welcome to everyone who is connecting with us online. Um, all the places, whether it's at home or across the country or walking your dog, wherever it is, um, there is a place for you here and we're glad that you're with us. For all of us who are gathered in the sanctuary, um, a warm welcome to you as well. It's our third week of Advent already. And so uh, with all the colors of the season, that deep anticipation of blue, water, and sky, and these old stories um, in the Gospel of Luke that remind us that God did have a specific plan, and it wasn't for certain until people actually said yes and spoke and embarked in the places that they were at uh, to make the story um, come back to us. And I think we need it now more than ever to hear um, there's this undercurrent of promise in our lives, even when we get distracted, to go back and hear these stories again. So our Advent wreath is here, our choir is here, and I would like to um, have you say a warm welcome to Sherry Larson. Sherry, hello. Sherry is here, and Kevin, her husband. Kevin, if you'll give a wave, welcome to Mount Olivet. Sherry is um, six months away from graduating from Luther Seminary with her Master of Divinity to be a pastor among us. And she is currently doing her internship year, which is a year of on-the-job training at Spirit of Joy in Buffalo. And uh, Sherry was interested in um, getting some experiences in a larger uh, community. And uh, we said yes, absolutely. So Sherry is here with us. She will be here with us regularly in worship, both to preach and to preside and to walk with us on staff as we do all the things that we do here. And Sherry, it's just a joy to have you here. And thank you for Spirit of Joy for having them pivot as they do so you can share this. And um, please, after the service, um, say hello to Sherry and um, Kevin as well. And um, I told her this is a good place to learn, and it's not about perfect. It's about being real and uh, this work that we have around us to proclaim God's love through Jesus Christ. And it's a reminder of what the church is still up to in the world, training new leaders um, among us. And that's exciting for us as well. So with that, Carlson family, Ella, hello, Kelly and Heather, uh, we're so glad you're here um, to be a part of lighting three candles today on the Advent wreath as we sing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel.
On this third Sunday of Advent, we light a candle to help us repent. To repent of how we have, been, have not borne the fruit of our faith. Though we think our good works can't really matter, this candle illuminates the truth. That even the dimmest light glows with possibility and promise. Though we wonder how our witness makes a difference, the Holy Spirit's light radiates from our acts of love and mercy. And so we respond, what then should we do? Blessed are those who believe that the fruits of the spirits are ours to bear. Please stand as we sing together. Good morning. Today's reading is from Luke chapter 3. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able to, from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, what then should we do? In reply, he said to them, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none. And whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized, and they asked him, Teacher, what should we do? He said to them, Collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, And we, what should we do? He said to them, Do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation, and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered them all by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. The Gospel of our Lord.
Grace and peace to you, Mount Olivet. I am so grateful to be here among you. In my family, we have an often repeated joke in recognition of our poor attention. This snarky comment is prominently display displayed on a refrigerator magnet. Sorry I misunderstood you, but in my defense, I wasn't listening. And sorry to our reader, Joni, if we didn't listen. But in our defense, we might not have wanted to listen to a message that began with, you brood of vipers. But sometime later, we heard that last line. He proclaimed the good news to the people. And we might have thought, wait, what good news? What did I miss? But I urge you, and I push myself to dig back into this text. Some of the crowd gathered around John that day might have remembered his birth, how John's father, Zechariah, was rendered speechless by the angel Gabriel for the duration of Elizabeth's pregnancy. They might remember asking about this eight-day-old baby John, what will this child become? Well, here he is, this guy from the wilderness. Last week, Pastor Chapman called him a disruptor, shouting about vipers and wrath. And they're wondering to themselves, could this be the Messiah? Through his fiery words and confrontational preaching, John is doing what he was called to do, preparing the way. And I blame Handel's Messiah for making me think that it might be beautiful. Every valley shall be exalted, every mountain and hill made low, and the crooked paths made straight. Then I really listened to those words. Filling valleys, raising mountains, straightening roads, that kind of work requires some heavy equipment. It's going to be noisy, and it's going to be messy, and it will overturn some things. Things like attitudes, expectations, and behaviors. And here is this messenger, John, fulfilling God's call by saying, bear fruits worthy of repentance. And I thought of the fig tree sculpture in the narthex and how we know a tree by its fruits. The Good News Bible translates the verse this way, do those things that show that you have turned from your sins. Repenting, turning back from sin and toward God, will disrupt our lives and our habits in the same way as taking a bulldozer to mountains and valleys does. Repenting is not the quick, I'm sorry, of a small child who doesn't know what to be sorry for, but just wants to be out of time out. Repenting is a specific and a real change. John preaches that there's an ax right there, prepared to cut them down and throw them into the fire. So it's no wonder they interrupt him and ask, what then should we do? John doesn't need to think about the answer. He says, share with those in need. And it sounds simple. And is it too simple? There's a story in 2 Kings about Naaman, a great ruler and a commander of the army who has leprosy. He sends a whole lot of money in a letter to the king, asking for a cure. And he's likely expecting the king to send some prestigious doctor or some expensive medicines his way. Instead, the prophet Elisha offers a remedy. Go wash in the Jordan River seven times and you will be healed. That's good news, right? Naaman wanted nothing to do with this. He wanted to do something a lot harder something grander, maybe something he could make a show of. He suggested that the Jordan wasn't even a good enough river to heal him. 
For Naaman, taking the word of a lowly prophet meant setting aside his position, his pride, and his money. It was costly to his reputation for the great Naaman to go on the cheap. But when he finally relented, he was healed. All that to say, maybe, what sounds simple might have some deep complexities. Share with those in need sounds simple, but do we do it? Often enough, generously enough. And are we able to keep it simple, or do we need recognition? And can we share with those in need over and over and over again without becoming resentful and selfish? And sometimes it's about how do we start when a need is so great, as it was shown with the drone footage of the tornado damage in the south. I think John would just say, start sharing. The tax collectors, for good reason a disliked and a distrusted group, were the next to ask what they should do, and John says, quit cheating. Again, it sounds simple, but would it be? Maybe the whole system depends on skimming off the top. So could a tax collector, or even a handful of them, stand up against this entire system? What might their honesty cost? Whistleblowers, then and now, are often not received well. To be worthy of repentance, tax collectors will need courage. We will need to be ready for the fallout. And to the soldiers, John says, don't use your power to take advantage of others. Again, it's an action worthy of being called repentance because it won't be simple. The soldiers have been trained to be powerful, to be unyielding, to honor a hierarchy. They may face punishment or demotion if they step out of line. It's a little unsettling, isn't it? Because we are all part of larger systems. Doing the right thing might not be obvious or easy. I buy a lot of books for classes at seminary, and I struggle with both supporting my local Buffalo Books and Coffee store and buying books that I can afford at larger retailers, I try to do both. I remember trying to be an ethical consumer by refusing to give my business to a particular big box store that I understood did not treat its workers very well. My boycott lasted over a year, and I was so proud. Then I read that this same company because of its power in the market, is able to demand more environmentally friendly packaging and shipping from its vendors. And I care about the earth too, so should I shop there or not? Or it can be a little different than that. Here we are, keeping distant from each other, limiting our interactions, and wearing our masks. Such actions are right and good and healthy and so tiring and costly to our relationships, to our enjoyment, to our mental health. That's what it means to bear fruit worthy of repentance, to change our lives so that we can love our neighbors, work together, and not become weary of doing good. All this talk about repentance sounds discouraging, perhaps even enough to slip into not listening mode again. But it's only the half of it. Repentance is turning from sin, but repentance is also encountering the love, grace, and mercy of God. We are called to repent. God enables us to do so with faith that God gives us. And when we don't repent, God is still faithful and gracious and loving, full of forgiveness, already finding us before we know we are lost. 
Repentance is an invitation to a richer, fuller life, to a place of love and freedom, integrity and agency. And we must remember that we are not always the main character of the story. When anyone repents and turns toward God, whether we know that person or not, whether we like them or not, the kingdom of God and the ways we can experience that kingdom right here, right now, are renewed and expanded. Remember Naaman? Simple water did not seem like enough. Now, Naaman wasn't being baptized, but I can still imagine him saying in this moment, how can water do such things? And you lifelong Lutherans, who might have had to answer this question at your confirmation, you might know this answer from Martin Luther's small catechism. Water by itself is only water, but with the word of God, it is a life-giving water, which by grace gives the new birth through the Holy Spirit. The last sentence of this reading was, he proclaimed the good news to the people. This is that good news. The baptism Christ will bring, one of the Holy Spirit and of fire, one that will enlighten and refine, will strengthen and purify. Today, we give two invitations for Christ to come into the midst of us. First, we sang, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Today's verse reminds us that Christ comes in cloud and majesty and awe. That coming will change some things, as light coming into the darkness always does, for all creation, for all nations. And so we sing our second invitation, Savior of the nations, come. Come, bring your peace and your possibilities. Come, Emmanuel. Bring your comfort and your care. Come, Lord Jesus. Come. Amen. Please stand as we sing together, Savior of the Nations, come.
As this Advent good news stirs among us, we confess our faith, the faith of the church, using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Each and every week we tell a story of who we are as a community and um, last week I spoke to you directly and said we have a need and that is that we support our community partners, uh, Parenting with Purpose and uh, Trinity Congregation in the Riverside area along with local families and last Sunday um, we were not close to our goal. And so I spoke that invitation, I sent an email and I want to tell you that you have responded. Um, Sherry, one of my favorite things about Mount Olivet is I think we have gen generosity in our bones, although sometimes it's a little bit more last minute. Um, but um, a couple years ago, um, it was $500,000 uh, to update our kitchen and community room to serve a meal with loaves and fishes, and we raised six twenty-five. dollars uh, last spring, it was housing assistance for PRISM, and we were hoping for $7,500, and we got 32000 And I want to let you know, with Christmas giving, we exceeded our goal. We were able to serve even more families locally because of your generosity. And I mean it. It's amazing. And none of us can do this on our own. You had no idea what your neighbor was going to do. Uh, but you responded how you were called to, and I think it's living out the gospel that John proclaimed um, in this third Sunday of Advent. So a deep sense of gratitude, and if you ever wonder the impact of what it means to be church, what it means to be community, I think this is just one of many examples of what we're able to do, this call of God to show up in love for our neighbor. So for all that ways um, that you have shown up and given so generously. Um, we're deeply grateful on behalf of all of us here at Mount Olivet, so thank you for that. So now, if you're online, uh, feel free to piece up in the comments, share your piece, and we do the same um, as we gather here, just to take these kind of sterile positions um, that we have with our masks on and turn and look at your neighbor who's around you. And I'm just seeing this bigger view here, and. Um, Worship every week is continuing to build and emerge, and we're so grateful for our sense of presence because we need to see that in comments online and also in bodily form too. So uh, we'll share the piece, and then we'll also collect our offering for all the ways that you give to the vision and mission here at Mount Olivet for the work specifically that we are able to do because we are who we are. So now may the peace of God be with you all. Let's both share and receive peace from those around us.
Thank you, choir. We pray together, God of our waiting and watching. We offer the gifts of our hearts and lives to the service of all your people. Prepare the way before us as we meet you in this simple meal through Christ Jesus, our pathway and peace. Amen. The Lord be It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will make all things new, in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels and the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. My soul hath wings of greatness, O God, and my spirit rejoices. She was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it and gave thanks and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Online and on person, the Spirit connects us as we pray together the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There's a place for you at this meal. Uh, John was so specific in how he called individual groups of people to repent and to live this good news. And we just prayed in that offertory prayer, a simple meal, bread and wine, crackers and juice. How can this be so? But we know it's not just bread and wine and crackers and juice. God's word spoken just before Jesus died to say, do this to remember me. Do this to remember that you are a part of this, that your simple acts matter. They're the little bobcats and bulldozers of this world pushing the earth to prepare the way. And so we do it again this week as well. For those of you who are online with your simple food in your home, the body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. For those that are gathered in the sanctuary, the ushers will usher you up. Our crackers um, are wafers and they are gluten-free. And then you are f feel free to go to the right or the left on where you are sitting to receive the juice and the wine. You are invited into a time of prayer after you receive the meal, if you choose to be in your pew, or you can come up front and use the kneelers as well. Please come forward. The feast is prepared. Jordan's banks the Baptist cry announces the Lord is near Awake and let the merry ring the tidings of the King of Kings Then cleanse me every life from sin Forth your hand, our help restore, and take us rise to forevermore. For let your face upon us shine and fill the world with love divine. All praise to you. Thank you. 
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. We now move in um, to our time of prayers um, after we have been forgiven, received uh, the word of God and, and been fed in the meal. Um, we are set to turn and face God and neighbor, and we do that in prayer here at Mount Olivet. Our prayers are the prayers that are uh, the present tense going on in our lives. And so uh, for all of you who are online, feel free to type your comments in um, right now. And there's a little bit of a delay, and we will uh, speak your prayers on your behalf. And for those of us who are in the sanctuary here, just raise your hand and I will come close and pray those prayers um, together as well. And so I'll start us off and then um, I look to all of us um, to be able to pray together. Let's pray. Um, God, today for uh, John's witness and his word that comes in the wilderness, uh, the word of God that comes so specifically, um, this is what we do to turn towards you. Um, to embody um, this kingdom that you are setting, to prepare the way to plow through this world um, for level ground for people to walk on, for everyone to have enough. And honestly, God, each of us can do something specifically and tangibly. It doesn't ever feel like that's enough, that it should be more grand and holy. But the specificity of those daily acts, they do change the world and they change us. So with things like um, a word that lives and lands in our lap each and every week for a meal um, that we taste and eat as spiritual food for all the ways that you call us um, to be about your love and hope, your mercy, your word in the world. Let it be God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. I'm going to start first with those of us who are gathered here. Uh, what prayers do you have today? Don. Careful listening. Yeah. Uh, so Don's prayer is a, a gentle word and careful listening in our homes. Um, for that reminder, uh, Sherry, in your sermon, um, when people speak, to be able to listen and to respond in a way of gentleness. Um, God, may this be so. God, in your mercy. Yeah, Peter. What's your friend's name? What's your friend's name? Larry. Larry. Um, so, Peter, we, we pray your prayer today. Uh, those specific people whom we are praying for, their particular names, all of us are holding those on our hearts today. Um, for Larry, with this fresh diagnosis of stage four cancer, um, for news that knows that death is certain, um, for the waiting, for the not knowing, and God, in that known and unknown, uh, for love to come, uh, for Larry to know uh, that even in death, um, God will make a way. And Peter, for all the ways that you will show up for Larry and others around him, for his family, to walk in these times um, where the way ahead is not clear. For healing for Larry, uh, God, we speak now those individual names we each have, those people we are praying for. God, in your mercy. Yeah, Tammy. Tammy, John's praying, or uh, John, Tammy is praying for you today, head on your shoulder as your kid, um, uh, and, and for all your siblings in your family, 
uh, you are holding a lot as you continue to care for Robin um, in her time in memory care. And um, this ongoing prayer, this never ceasing prayer of yours. Um, and, and Tammy, for that love to come close specifically for your family as you gather here and worship and as you trust, as you walk these steps of faith each and every day. God, in your mercy. Brian. So, Rick, Rebe Rebecca, and Ross, your cousins, uh, for your Aunt Bonnie, who died this week, we prayed for her last week in her last days. Um, can we just speak that your mom comes from a family of 12 kids? Amazing. 13 in total. And um, Darlene, we're praying for you um, as you are the last sibling, the last generation of your family. Uh, for you as matriarch now, for the love that you have for your siblings as you have watched them uh, both live and now die. Um, that's a lot to hold in itself, Brian, for you, for safe travel for you and Karen as you travel to the funeral. Uh, for Bonnie's life, God, we speak um, in this world and now in heaven. Uh, all who grieve, especially this time of year, that's very poignant in remembering. Um, God, please send your mercy and your love. God, in your mercy. Yes. Yeah. Um, God, we pray for Jan. Uh, surgery tomorrow um, in a fragile time, this COVID time of surgeries and procedures. Uh, for health and safety um, in the midst of that, for that surgery to be successful and for ongoing recovery. God, in your mercy. Barb. Yeah, yeah we take an outward face, God, um, into the world and uh, to those people impacted by tornadoes in the midst. That aerial view that you talked about, Sherry of being able to see the devastation for the loss of property and hope and lives uh, for this rebuilding. And the only way from where they are now to restoration is every person to be a part of making that happen. Um, God, how you are working in the midst of that day by day, person by person to build community. Um, help us uh, be compassionate um, to those people, especially in dire need after disaster. God, in your mercy. Yeah, Mark. Um, God, we continue to pray for Jean, um, Mark's dad, um, in these next steps uh, with colon cancer. Um, for all the pieces, God, that go into the mix of, of treatment uh, surgery, all the things. Uh, Mark, for you and Holly, as you come close with love, this sense of care, <laughs> dailiness uh, for your siblings as well as they come and care. God, we pray for healing for Jean in this time of waiting and unknown. God, in your mercy. Yeah, Nancy. Remember that. So lost in your family, Nancy, grieving Norma and Kenny. Um, for all that your family is holding, um, the trauma of an accident, and uh, for Norma, 
who um, in her 90s chose to die at home. Um, God, for all these specific stories of both life and death, um, this promise um, that nothing can separate us from your love. Nancy, for your family as they grieve. For Norma and Kenny's life, God, we pray. God, in your mercy. Yeah, Becky. So Becky, we uh, pray for you specifically, and your mom and your brother's here. It's so nice to have you in worship. Um, this kind of crisis that we pray for often here at church and caregiving where you go from living at home to not being able to live at home. And how do you make that transition? What are the resources available for you? What is the safety for your mom? And what is the safety for you as a family? It overtakes your life. And so, God, we pray for gentleness, for resources, um, for community around you who have walked these steps. Whatever we have to give to you at this moment that you need, that we give in love. And uh, for this sense of deep care for you um, and your entire family as you walk this way, and specifically we pray for your mom, that she will find a place that is healthy and safe for her. Uh, and for um, the care and relief you need in this time as well. God, in your mercy. Uh, we pray for the family of Jan Grindy. Scott Grindy is our business administrator. Scott and Kathy, longtime members. Uh, Jan died um, last, last Sunday night. We had prayed for her in church. Her funeral is next Sunday at 3 o'clock here at Mount Olivet. Uh, for her husband, Ray, of so many years of, for Jan's gentleness um, and love that even in the time of death radiated out into this world, and for that family as they prepare, especially in this, this time of Advent, uh, remembering, as we had said, just a really um, poignant time uh, for the coming of family and community to celebrate Jan's life, we pray. God, in your mercy. Okay, dear friends online, let's get to your prayer and Yeah, Teresa, we pray with you, uh, your sister Kelly's surgery um, on her brain aneurysm this coming Wednesday. Uh, Teresa, uh, we pray for you in this fragile time. Um, uh, brain aneurysm and all of that uh, teetering on the, the sense of life and death. Uh, for healing, uh, for comfort, for peace, uh, Teresa, for you, God, in your mercy. Yeah, JoLynn, uh, we echo the same prayers, prayers for the tragic victims of Kentucky storms, for saving grace and locating survivors, and for peace and comfort to those suffering uh, life losses. Uh, we just speak that prayer today. God, make it so. God, in your mercy. Yeah, Samantha, we're praying for you. Uh, pray for our daughter, Madison. She was just baptized last weekend as she waits um, to see an ENT doctor on January 14th. Um, she is on her sixth ear infection within two months. Oh, bless you, Madison, and, and bless your parents um, in this time of healing um, to provide relief for her little body um, and sleep um, for you and Josh in the midst of that. Um, God, we pray for healing for Madison. God, in your mercy. Into your hand, O oh God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy and your grace and your love. Amen. Sherry, thank you for today. Um, we welcome you into this fold of Mount Olivet and for your proclamation um, and for your reminder of those, um, those promises that come to us today. Um, and I'm excited for this. We haven't had an intern um, since I've been here. 
and looking forward to that. And we're just on the bubble to calling a new pastor. I'm telling you, we are on the bubble. And i um, excited to share news of more specificity in the week ahead. Um, but it's such a hopeful time here, um, this current of future and uh, new leaders among us. And um, that is good. So next Sunday, our Advent concert, oh gosh, singing and music, um, the way into the season, um, very special to us. Angela, in her great leadership, pulls together voice and instrumental in creative ways. And that's going to be during worship, so both at the 9 o'clock and at 1045. It's going to be online and in person. And what a beautiful way to invite someone who maybe hasn't been to church to be able to come and participate in that. And Ange, we look forward to all the ways um, that those stories will come to us. That's next week, which is good. And then Christmas Eve, let me give you the scoop. Here in the sanctuary, 2 o'clock and 3.30, both in person and online, a service of Holy Communion Chapel, our historic chapel, 8.30 p.m. That one is not online. We don't have the technical capabilities, um, but they're in person, a very special experience in that um, place that we love dearly at 8.30. And then back here at 10 o'clock, both in person and online. So as you talk about uh, Christmas in your family, um, know that those times hopefully can fit into your schedule that way. And then lastly, if you are able to help us out on any of those services with communion, ushering, greeting people, we sure could, we sure could help. Not quite sure of uh, what uh, crowds will look like um, in this ongoing season of COVID, but that sense of hospitality and welcome is so important. So if you're able to do that, um, thank you in advance. You can sign up online, but Joy is here as well that can guide you on that. Um, and I think that's it. We do not have anything specific between services, so grab a cup of coffee and connect with people around you. And I'm going to invite Sherry to come up front. No, we're going to sing first. Let's sing. Okay, please stand. He came down that we may have life. He came down. May God fill us with all joy and expectation so that we may abound together in hope. Through Christ Jesus, for whom we wait. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is near. Thanks be to God. Amen.